uh, Tony Considine coming in now. Tony, how are you doing? How are you doing, boys? How are you getting on? We're not so bad. Good, Tony. You got the you got the technology and everything working okay this morning. Ah, uh, look, I learned a lot from you the last time, boys. You know <laughs> what I mean, you know. Yeah, well, great to have you here this morning. Uh, we're going to go straight to the Clare victory over Watford the other day, two twenty-two to sixteen points. What's your reflections on it now? A couple of days after. Uh, a bit disappointing, really. You know, for we had two classic games really in the last number of weeks between uh, Limerick and Clare and Cork and Tipperary. So. You know, everyone going to, to Torles on, on Saturday really were, were under the impression we were going to get another classic, you know, that Watford really got out, uh, they got a way out when, when Tipperary and Cork drew in Packy Keeve, you know. So I was hoping it wouldn't be a draw in Packy Keeve because, uh, you know, I wanted the result there because it gives everyone a better chance. But I said the draw had opened it up for everybody, you know, and especially Watford. Watford were in a magnificent position going into to Torles. I said, they'll come out now, they'll be firing guns everywhere, you know, when they come out onto the field, you know, and you could sense even when they come out onto the field, that real energy wasn't in the team, you know, and I was questioned against Limerick as well, because when they were playing Limerick, they were in a position to win the game, you know, definitely should have won the game against Limerick, but they really lacked that kind of energy and that togetherness, you know, when you see in the team, I, I, I believe that the war for fitness is not great now. That, that's, my, that's my opinion from, from looking from afar from it. I didn't think their fitness was up to scratch that you'd need for this championship because, as you know, lads, this is a dog-eat-dog championship, you know. And if you're not in, 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 in proper frame and uh, proper condition, I think you could be taken out and Watford were really taken out. Without a, they went out with a whimper, really, didn't they, on Saturday, you know. I mean, to say if they won the game, they were back into it. And, you know, even if they won the game on Saturday, they had a chance of getting to the Munster final if things went well as well. So... I just to know what's gone wrong there. This is the second year it has happened. Uh, Liam Cahill got fair stick last year when it happened in Ennis, when they when they're turning the towel in Ennis, you know. So when a team starts doing that, it's 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 not good, you know. And uh, Warford hurling, I think at the moment, it's not in a great place at the moment. I think, you know. And look, a lot of people have to take responsibility, but I just couldn't understand the tactics they were using in Sarda. There was only one tactic to use in Sarda, and that was go for it. You know, and and yeah, the... just on that, Tony, like we all know Waterford is an off the cuff team, don't we? Generally, yeah, yeah. down to the yes. years, Ken McGrath, John Milan, uh, Dan, Big Dan, Tony Brown, etc. Like, were you expecting them to take off the shackles on Saturday night? I know I was to an extent, anyway, and just go for it. Yeah, but I think everybody was expecting that, Michael, you know, but obviously the Waterford crowd weren't expecting it, expecting it because they never turned up. The Waterford supporters did not turn up, and they haven't turned up for any game this year for them. You know, so that's a bad sign. You know, that's a bad sign. When you see that happening, you're saying, what's wrong here? You know, it, it, are the vibes good? You know, uh, I, I didn't think that Warford were, were up for the game. And, so, and look, at Clare wasn't great now in the first half of Saturday either. Let's yeah. be honest here. It was a poor game. It was a real poor game in the first half. But I suppose when Brian got him in at halftime, he said, hey, lads, these fellas don't hope too much. We've got to go out and win this game, you know. And, and obviously they did it. They wouldn't pull it up, you know what I mean? It, it, you ask any clear person coming home, they were, while they were happy with the win, they were saying, look, geez, if we play like that against the next day against Cork, we, we won't be going anywhere, you know? So they have a lot to work on or think about this week, and I'm sure they'll do that, you know what I mean? But look at uh, Warford were poor opposition, went out very... And it's not nice to see. I, I think it's not nice to see any county failing like that. I don't mind where you're from. We're all, we're all native of somewhere. We, we all want to see good hurling. We want to see good contests. And if we don't get that... I think it, it's a big disappointment, really. You know, it's a huge disappointment. I think that for especially that the Munster Championship has been so good up to now, that this brought it down a bit on, on Saturday. You know, do you know when you go through um, Clare's performance? Tony Kelly was obviously excellent. He scored thirteen, albeit I think we were all surprised to see Daryl Lyons marking him in the full back line for much of the game. Uh, Aidan McCarthy wasn't playing, and like you know, they were saying in the analysis beforehand that you know Tony Kelly is just as good a free taker, but. I think he does miss one or two, and like he's obviously a brilliant player, but he does miss one or two. So if he's injured for a long period, that's a blow. But um, you know, what was your overall feeling about Clare in this game, and what's the mood like in Clare? The mood is very good in Clare at the moment. Uh, I I believe Clare didn't reach anywhere near they could play on last Saturday. That's my own belief. Everyone has an opinion, as you know. But I think Clare holding is on a is on a high at the moment. Uh, the Miners won last week. They won the Munster Minor Championship. Uh, we beat Tip in the under-20 Monday night before that. And uh, we were in Turles again last Saturday. We had the road warden going to Turles. You know, <laughs> we were there three times last week, you know. Yes, you, could, and, you could be wearing the worst road, couldn't you? 
You could, you know, and didn't the great road at times either, you know what I mean? The motorway is good, you know what I mean? At least there's a road out of it, you know what I mean? You know, man, good thing, you know? well, but, you're but, in you know, Bursley on the way through, stopping in the shops there and buying stuff, so fair play to you there. Is there shops in Bursley? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, I, I, I think Tip or Claire are on a good, in a good place at the moment. Uh, as I said, the under-20s are in the final tonight against Cork in the Gaelic Rounds. And, uh, you know, I think this has all come from really the senior team having the, the, game, the, 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 the year they had last year. When your flagship team is doing well, I think it lifts everybody. And I think uh, Claire had done that. Uh, the way the senior team performed last year in the Munster Championship, I think everyone around Claire and the management and Claire teams are very sound fellas as well now. We've Bach O'Connell there over the minor team. He was there last year and lost to Tipperary in the Munster minor final by, in penalties. You know, so, I mean, they, he day. said, they, yeah, a great game. It was a great game. And it's supposed to be a great game for Tipperary as well, you know. And you went down to win the All-Ireland. Luckily enough, you beat, I don't know how you know that. You probably stole it anyway, but you won it anyway, you know. <laughs> Poor Offaly, Michael, you know what I mean? So they Tony, get Tony, Tony, you're taking pops to everybody this morning, even inadvertently. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, look, at the, in, at the end of the day, lads, you're thinking to yourself, once the senior team is doing well, I think it lifts everybody. And I think Claire have put a management teams in place of their teams. You know, the old guard has gone in Claire. And I think the new guard is doing a great job. And I think the man that has taken a lot of credit for that is Brian Lone. I think Brian has come in, he's managed the team very well. And I'm sure he'd had a say in who we, with the minors and with the under 20s as well. You know, because they, they're the future of Claire, really. And I, I think that's a very good thing to see. But look, we still have to go out next Sunday and try and get through to the Munster final or stay in the Munster uh, in the All-Ireland series and that's not going to be easy as well you know but it's nice to see things going very well at the moment and things are going well as you know um, if they're not going well it, it gives a county a bad feel and I think that's happening in Watford I think Watford all their teams are not going well and I think it's a reflection really when the senior team don't do well every other team maybe follows that as well yeah Michael I'll throw this at you right so Watford it's their sixth championship defeat in a row they're, they played like a team inside out with Daryl Lyons in the full back line and then you had the likes of Conor Prunty and Conor Gleeson maybe further out the field. When they were taking their puck outs, they were basically, and I said this to you after the uh, court game, that their full back line was outside the 45. So like, if you lose the ball when you're trying to run it out, you're totally wide open um, in defence. So I couldn't get my head around it. Like even for Davy, and you know, like I remember like we've given him a platform plenty of times on off the ball a couple of years ago and we had a show there. We brought him on one day, he was under fire, and he was talking about his tactics and explaining them and all that. So we've always tried to give him, you know, the, the kind of the rub of the green or whatever you want. But, like, it's one win in the last 10 championship games for him between Wexford and Waterford. It's three in the last 16, and they're Leash, Carlo, and obviously the, the Leinster final against Kilkenny. So he's on a particularly bad run. And, like, it seemed to all culminate in this game because it was just a total no-show. And they have five red cards in eight games this year as well. So discipline as well. It just seems to be so many things wrong. Yeah, their scoring average is Shane as well. Like, I think it's 17.67 their average in, in championship games. Like, they haven't scored a goal. They haven't even reached the 20-point mark. Like, <laughs> you know, 16 or 17 points, lads, in modern hurling could be a half-time score if you're flying it. Do you know what I mean? If you're going really well. Um, they, they shot six points in the second half. I couldn't get over. They stayed in the dressing room about 20 minutes a half time and they came out and I'm thinking these boys are surely going to be G'd up or whatever and they came out kind of limp enough and Claire had the game basically won in, in that third quarter uh, it's just very very hard to get your head around some things that were going on like when I think it, it's just uh, I know Liam Cattle moved Jack Fagan back wing back and I think that was basically to match up with Hegarty or Morrissey and to me it made sense he was trying something different in his third year um, but then like I think for him to stay there and for him to be full back at different stages the other day like to me he's the best ball winner they have and he's playing in their half back line or playing in their full back line or playing sweeper um, I just couldn't get my head around some things they were, they were doing the puck out thing is a mad one Shane really they, they get the ball out to the 45 everyone disperses and they're gone if they're turned over as they were when Tony Kelly got that flick on um, I can't remember who it was going through Tony Kelly got the flick he flicks it out balls up the other end of the field there's nobody there like there's nobody home Um 
very, very hard. I just think the whole thing has been overtaught and probably overcoached as well. Like to me, as I said to Tony there a couple of minutes ago, to me, Waterford are, Waterford are an instinctive team. They're an off-the-cuff team. And I think that looks to have been taken out of them to some respect. Even like Ozzy Gleason, like we weren't going to see, it just didn't look like we were going to see any flicks or any bits of magic or anything the other day. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's kind of been coached out them to, to some respect. They just look like a team that are playing in shackles. And even someone like Patrick Curran, who I've great time for, uh, particularly in the last couple of years, I think he was one of Cattle's best players. For him to be reduced to a bit part role, nah, that, some, that, that doesn't really sit that well with me now, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, what was the contrast between the score and the average scoreline that they had last year versus this year? Yeah, it was uh, 26.75 last year. And that was in a you know a Munster campaign that they didn't play particularly well. But they banged in a heap of goals. I think they ended up with seven goals. Um, mm. Like, th- that's like nine points of a difference. Like, that's 26.75. That has you competitive in every game. That has you beaten Tipperary in the game. It has you within three of Limerick. It has you uh, close to Cork as well. But, like, they pale in significance. Um, mm-hmm. And I just think... Like, I, I don't think Waterford people are buying this idea of a project at the moment. Like, They're not the following the day, anyway. No. At the end yeah. of the day, lads, Waterford were in the all Ireland final three years ago. Yeah. They were in the all Ireland semi-final two years ago. They won the league last year. Like, this, as, as somebody said to me, like, Davey hasn't taken over the Renford reject soccer team where they've, like, no ability or no class. Like, Waterford have loads of classy players. Um, and I just... I, I don't know. I'd have question marks of whether people are buying into this project and maybe even whether players are buying into the project as well. Um, and I think the off-season is going to be an interesting one to see if it's the same personnel on the line next year as it is at the moment. What's well, you know, Tony, yeah, uh, go ahead. It's amazing there. You said there were 20 minutes in the dressing room. I suppose the longer they stayed in the dressing room, the longer they were going to be in the championship. You know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at it that way as well. But what went on in that 20 minutes? You know, was it picked out where they could win the game? Or was it picked out, was their head filled with tactics again? That's what I'm asking. Like, what was said at halftime, being so long in the dressing room for 20 minutes, what kind, what kind of messages were they getting at halftime? Because they completely collapsed in the second half. They completely collapsed. Like, let's be honest, this, this was a no-show in the second half of Watford, you know. So, and, and you said there about, you know, they, they're getting less than 20, min- 20 points a game. I think they've got about 53 points in the three games they've played. And I think they've scored, they've conceded 370. I think that's the, that's the amount. That's with a sweeper now. And maybe two sweepers at times. They're conceding yeah. that amount, you know. Now, but uh, when I looked at the full forward line of Warford, it was picked for Sunday, right? Last Sunday, uh, Saturday. It was Stephen Binnis, Austin Gleeson and Desi Hutchison. Now, if you ask anyone in the country about them three players at all, say there are three players that you would have to keep an eye on if they were in the full forward line. You know, every one of them is capable of winning a match, really. You know, but sure, they weren't in the full forward line. Sometimes uh, I looked at Daisy Hutchins, he was out at midfield and things like that. But I think the biggest mistake of all was to put Daryl Lyons, Mac and Tony Kelly. Now, whatever chance Daryl Lyons had of taking on Tony Kelly around the middle of the field, he had no chance whatsoever of taking him on around the full back line. Because Kelly was like, I'd say he had dizzy spells from following him, really. With all due respects, like because Kelly was going all over the place. Kelly was fantastic as hard. And we all know Kelly's probably one of the top players in the country. You know, you need a good man marker and you need a defender to mark him. I was surprised they didn't put somebody like maybe Connor Gleason on him, you know, who's who's a good tight marker. Now maybe he'd do the same to Connor Gleason, but at least Gleason would have the experience of being a defender. And the I instincts, I, Tony, as well. The defensive yes, instincts. The instincts well, yeah, of being yeah. a defender. And maybe he'd upset him in some way. You know what I mean? Because he's a fairly hardy boy now, uh, at least. And, you know, so I, I was thinking, like, what are they doing here, you know? And, like, you look at the Clare halfback line. Do you Ryan? Who was picking him up when he got up to feel like? He was going up. How many shots did David call? You know, uh, D- David, Mc- or, D- David McInerney. You know, no problem. Get the ball, look up. He was finding his John Conlon the same, you know. They were completely all over the shop, Watford, really. You know, in hurling terms. But you're right there when you say what? The great Watford team or any Watford hurler I've seen that has been really good and the teams they had, they always played off the cuff. And they were brilliant, brilliant to watch. You know what I mean? I know they didn't win in All-Ireland. They may be very unlucky in the noughties that they didn't win in All-Ireland. But you have to say, even, even if they didn't win in All-Ireland, that they were probably one of the best teams that we have seen for entertainment in, the, in that number of years. You know, for the last 20 years, you have to say that Warford really, really entertained people. But, and and the, crowd, the crowd followed them big time. You had massive crowds following Warford. 
I, you know, you, I'd say it was six, five or six, seven to one early as Saturday and Tullus with Clare. Just on your, on your point there, Tony, Waterford are not good to look at. Not, they're, no. not, they're, they're not enjoyable at the moment. They're no, not, not enjoyable no. games to watch. They were a year ago. They were a year ago. Like, that's that's yeah. the thing about it. They, but a, year, a year ago, like they were like they were just goals, goals, goals. They were so hungry for goals. And they had a couple of chances the other day. And obviously, we'll go into it. They had a red card as well the other day, which which you know greatly affected things mm. too. But they're yeah. not good to look at. They've, they've been involved in... The Limerick game was interesting, I would say. It was a different type yeah. of game. Not, still but, not good to look at. No, the Cork game... Is there not, no contest? Yeah, that, 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 no a, show, yeah. yeah, and that was a bit of a no contest the other day. Fair enough, they're not going to concede, you know, massive tallies. They're probably not going to concede a, a 330 or something like that. They're not going to be hit for a, a heap of goals. But it, it's not it's not good to look at. It's not good on the eye, especially in comparison to the, what the other four teams are doing in Munster. You see, they're not, they're not playing to their potential. It's as simple as that. And they're not playing to their potential. Is it because of the tactics they're being told to do? You know, I see Waterford players looking to the line when they don't play the right ball. No, that's not a way to go out and play hurling. You have to have freedom. You have to have freedom. Well, they're down to Davy then, Tony. Uh, well, you know, he's the manager of the team. And when the team don't perform, I'm sure he, he, he'd take responsibility for it. I don't know whether he does or not. But you have to take responsibility. We were all in manager's seats and things like that. And when your team, it's okay maybe if two or three of your players don't perform. You, 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 there's much you can do about it. And you'll have that in any given day that few fellas won't perform. Maybe it is nerves, maybe it is something, whatever, you know. But when maybe 15 of them don't perform, that's serious, you know, that's serious. That's something That's something back to the management of the team. Whether that's the physical trainer, the strength and conditioning man, or the nutritionist or whatever, you know, it's in big words now, you know. But it's back to somebody. But the responsibility and the book all stops with the manager. The manager is responsible for the team going on the field and they have to perform. Now, Warford are not performing. They have good players. I named three of them there in the full forward line. I mean, if you had a full back line against them, you'd say, these, you have to be on your alert today, lads. If their ball is coming in around here, these lads will finish, you know, if they get any chance at all. But the way they're playing, they just could not do that, you know, could not do it. Jack Fagan playing a sweeper, to me, that's not on. And still continuing playing the sweeper and the down the man. And you want to get to stay in the championship. There was no way that was going to happen, you know. You have to, you have to go all out for it, really. You know, it's unfair on players if they're tied by tactics, really, that's able to hurl. You can imagine tying up Tony Kelly with a tactic. I mean, wouldn't you take, wouldn't you take everything away from him, maybe, if you don't? Nah, that? some would say he was tied up for a while. I'm sure I don't. I'm sure I don't. Yeah, no, they were tied up, yeah, yeah. We won't say any more about for a while there, uh, uh, Michael, you know. But they were, you know. Tony Tony Kelly went from maybe being hurler of the year and a young hurler of the year in 2013 uh, and tactics took him back then for the next two or three years in his game. Under Lohan, he has really prospered under Lohan, hasn't he? You know, I, I would say, and maybe I'm very biased, I would say Tony Kelly has been the horror of the year for the last two to three years in Ireland. Maybe that's been biased now. And that's not, not against anybody that got us. You know, you have to win in All-Ireland to get the horror of the year. They usually come from that. But I think Kelly has been the best player in the country for the last two or three years in what he has achieved. You know, he's gone out every day for Clare. He got 13 points. He gets 16 points. Look at, look at the tackle he made in that fellow going through. I think it was Fitzgerald. Yeah, Hit Gerard, the ball yeah. away. And what did he do when he got the ball? He laid it off right away to Carl Malone, the ball at the other end of the field, to Dave, Dave Fitzgerald, passed it on to, to Ian Galvin, ball in the back of the net. You know, that all came from Tony Kelly. The one thing Tony Kelly has, he's a brilliant, brilliant, along with being a brilliant individual, he's a brilliant team player as well. And he's got that freedom to express himself. From Brian Lohan, he's got that. You know, he's going all over the field, you know. I I, I remember Tony uh, Tony Kelly playing a few years ago, I think it was against Watford. He was collecting ball all day in his full back line. Sure, he's going to do no damage from there. You know what I mean? You want a guy like that that's able to hold, you want him punishing any mistake that the opposition is making up the field, and he will do that. He will do whereas, it now. Yeah, whereas now, Tony, he's actually, um, he's tracking back, but he, yes. could be he could be corner forward the next minute. He could be yes. centre. Do you know what I mean? He's not. He, I think he's given a flexibility now because lads like that, with really great hurlers, you don't need to. Re you just tell them to you go don't. and play, play as they see, really. And I think he's been told to play it as he sees it now as well. A really good hurler with a brain, you don't need to tell him to do anything. It's the same as a jockey, you know. The jockey riding a horse. I remember talking to a trainer down here. I said, uh, What do, would you advise a jockey to do when he's riding a horse? He said, You never have to tell the good ones anything. You never have to say anything to them. And I said, what do you tell the other ones? You tell them to 
F off, he said, you don't want to. <laughs> you know, the can, logo I tell you, can I just tell you a good one on that, actually, Tony? It's gas that you say that. The best trainer in the world is probably Willie Mullins, the best national hunt trainer yes. in the world. He generally does not give his jockey any instructions before a race. He, yes. like, in the biggest races, he trusts them to do, you know, what he thinks he sees before him. To take a gap if it's there, to not take a gap if it's there. Sometimes I think we get tongue-tied in Hurden and the GA and, like, <laughs> strangle people. Whereas the best lads just say, play it as you see it. Do what you think is best. Nicky Quaid has no, has no set puck outs, by the way. Nicky yeah. Quaid has no set puck outs. He plays. Of course, he has no set puck outs because you know he, you know this thing about puck outs or the puck out. The goalie in my book is always there to do maybe one important thing. That's to stop goals, you know. And then say, oh, Jesse's puck outs are awful. You know what I mean? And I hear this rubbish. His puck outs are awful. Like it's up to the man out the field to win the ball. You know, you know when you go in the contest for a ball against you, it's up to you to win that ball. You know, but I see fellas with their hands up, they're 40 yards out and they lose, they want the ball into their hand, they get it, it falls out of it. <laughs> next thing, it, it goes after Hurley, and the next thing, the ball is over the bar. You know, win your own ball, I think. And I think the game is going to like that again now. Nicky Quaid will lace that ball out. Why would he? Why would he be worried about it? He's a man six foot five above that, put his hand up, or he'll bring it to ground and things like that, you know. So we're in a situation here where the goalie has a, the most important job he has to do is stop the conceding goals. Puck out. I often see years ago, the goalie wasn't able to puck out the ball. It was the full back was pucking us out. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, I know it's, we're going back in time here, lads, but that, that was it. You know what I mean? But he was still a good goalkeeper. Now they say if he's not able to pick a fella 80 yards away with, with the puck out, ah, you know, we want to play him or whatever like that. I, I, I just think he's gone overboard. As you say, it's the men out the field have to win the ball. And I think that's what Limerick have done. You know, surely there's a balance too on the puck outs. Like you have to have a goalie with a laser puck out too to put you on the front foot because teams sit back. I understand that, but not all the time because he mightn't get he mightn't get the the chance to do that, Shane. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, uh, if you can keep pressure on the goalkeeper as well, if there's three inside in the full forward line, he won't be long getting rid of it. You know what I mean? Because if there's pressure put on him, they get rid of the ball. But so now if they're pulling out their forwards, there's no pressure on the goalkeeper. So obviously he can look around and he can see where he's going to put the ball. You know what I mean? But like. If you have three inside in the full forward line, he don't have that much time to do that, you know, because they're going to go in on top of him. They're going to put pressure on him. And then maybe he'd put the ball out off the line. How many times you see the ball going out off the line from, from a puck out when a, when a goalkeeper is under pressure? Because that's what he'll do, you know. Mm. And, and many scores have come from uh, goalkeepers taking maybe short puck outs, giving it to a lad whose skill maybe wouldn't be the best. The next thing the ball is in the net or it's over the bar. You know, I always believe have the ball at the other end of the field as often as you can because you're going to do no damage to yourself when it's that end of the field. You know, so. Can I just ask but, you really quickly, uh, Tony? Would you have told Bar Would you have told Barry Hennessy much to do with his puck outs? And he's coming from a Limerick setup, um, obviously a very very high end setup. Would you have said play it as you see it, or what would you? Or we said I want you to go long predominantly. Or well, I I I I would be I would be going long with a lot of them. But I'd also say to Barry, look, at if you're going short, maybe go short with the 60-yard one, you know, not not the 20-yard one, really, because Barry yeah. is able to drive the ball at 100 yards, you know what I mean, you know, if it's metres now and things like that. But he's able to do that. So why give it 20 and give it to the fellow maybe that wouldn't even drive, his, uh, drive it as far as he could or maybe be as accurate as he could, you know what I mean? So I'd always like to keep the ball away from the goal as often as I could from our goals anyway. And, you know, Barry was brilliant at that, you know, but of course he has a good brain as well. But you were saying there about... Waterford, uh, you know, and, and their forum this year, they only beat Leash and Antrim this year in hurling. They, they, they didn't beat any other team, I think, in the league. Did they? No, I drew with Dublin in the first round. Drew with yeah, Dublin yeah. and they beat, they beat Leash. Like, that's not a great, great uh, form coming into the championship, really. You know what I mean? You know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's the hurling to me is, you know, you have your team, you prepare them as best you can for how many months, and I'm sure Waterford have been training for the last four or five months. You get them together for four or five months. But then again, of course, you know, when you cross the line, you have to do the business yourself. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if, if you're told to do something and it's not working, you say, geez, I had to change here. You know? Because I'm not getting any ball or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing myself. So you have to make up your own mind when you're on the field as well. So the Waterford players have to take a lot of responsibility here as well. You know? You. you can't be thrown in the towel. You know what I mean? You know? And they did that on Saturday in fairness. 
Would you have any concerns about Clare, Tony? Uh, other than diving there by Rory Hayes, would you have any concerns about I, 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 I would I would be very worried about that kind of thing now. I would have no time for that kind of thing, uh, fella diving and things like that. And Rory Rory would be better off to concentrate now and try and, uh, if we see in the first half there, he went down over the ball, very lackadaisical, and Jamie Barron should have stuck the ball in the back of the net. You know, I'd be more interested in trying to get that thing right now rather than being diving and fellas just maybe uh, whistling going to pass you or something like that, you know. That that is no place in the game for me now. That is no place. Now, uh, Callum Lyons was, was unlucky, I thought, really. I just thought he was unlucky, you know. I mean, he'd do maybe what any would do, you know. When a fella gets a dunt, you go in and you'll, you'll kind of, you know, let's spot at the moment thing. I just thought he was unlucky. I just thought he was unlucky, you know. And obviously, then with the Ryan Taylor with the Hurley and things like that, you know, I mean... Okay, you, you'd say he should be booked for that, all right. But the first one, you know, you, to, to, to very trivial, I thought, you know what I mean? You know, so I just thought he was unlucky. I'd have preferred myself personally to see 15 more for players in the field. I would have preferred to see that. I always prefer to win games, you know, without any advantage. And it's the test of your team then, you know what I mean? You go out there. And, you know, it wasn't a test for Clare on Saturday, especially in the second half. But Clare were poor in the first half. Was that because of the break for the two weeks, uh, uh, Shane, you know? They didn't play since the, the Limerick game, you know, and obviously maybe a bit of training and things like that. I thought they were a bit rusty. But once, I think the Clare player that's really playing well this year is David McInerney at wing back. I think he's he's having a, he had a brilliant game at Hardy against Limerick. Did you see and the hang time, time in the air, Tony, in the first oh, half? Yeah, he yeah, caught a ball, yeah. he was hanging in the air about 10 seconds. It's, uh... Yeah, you know, you know, the one thing about Clare, apart from reasonably good hurlers as well, they're good athletes as well. You know, uh, that was very athletic now, what David McInerney did there. Tony Kelly is a fantastic athlete. You know, he's he's here one day and he's gone 40, 50, 60 metres in another second. you know what I mean? So they have good movement. But there's a lot to do, Shane. You know, there's no guarantees in this championship yet now. The only team out of this championship is Watford. The other four are in it. You know what I mean? And look, at it's going to be dog eat dog next week. It's, the Torles, I believe, will be sold out. Uh, Innes will be sold out. You know, isn't that wonderful to see that? You know, that we have really looking forward to fantastic games next week. Like, I think there'll only be a bigger crowd from Limerick in Turles on Sunday than there will be from Tipperary. Because, you know, you know, because like they, they, they're, they're under pressure, you know, and as you know, the Limerick support are fantastic as well, you know, and they see now that they really need the support on Sunday. I think there'll be a massive crowd from Cork and Innes as well. We'll try and keep them out as much as we can, you know what I mean, you know. <laughs> if we could stop them at one ratty, you know what I mean, you know. But look, at the end of the day, it's it's great to look forward to, to, to two quality games that should be next Sunday because we didn't have that quality last Saturday, you know. So, And someone said the two games on RT next week as well, and then next Sunday or something like that. About time. <laughs> about time, yeah, yeah, about time, yeah. And uh, I suppose at the end of the day, look at maybe that's... I, I, I was talking to a fellow the other night and he was saying, I don't mind, he said, how I see it as long as I see it. You know what I mean? Or who does it? You know what I mean? You know, he said, it's, he said it's fantastic to be able to... I remember being involved years ago with Clare in the 90s. The Munster final was the, a deferred coverage at six o'clock in the evening. Really? You know? Deferred? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deferred, deferred. It wasn't showed live. That's you know what I mean? That's sacrilege now. Of all, of all the games now, to have a Munster final deferred is sacrilege. Yeah, that was deferred to six o'clock in the evening. You know what I mean? So look, it's, the lads were on the bus home like having a few drinks and things like when it was being shown. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> And I tell you, they had a good few. <laughs> they had a good few drinks, you know? And there was no phones like you have now, uh, uh, Michael, you know, that you could look at it. Do you know what I mean? You know, so it was great. Like, it was great then, you know, because I suppose the uh, fellas were trying to record it and things like that, you know, with tapes pushing them in. And, you know, ah, sure, look, it was, it was all over the place. But look, everything has moved on. And maybe hurling has moved on as well. But, you know, it's moved on maybe for the best in some of it too, you know. But, you know, I, I like to see all these teams, they, you know, we have only a few hurling teams, lads. You know, yeah, there's only a few hurling teams. I like to see the Watfords, the, the Offalys, and all these coming up. You know what I mean? You know, and I see Offaly on the under twenty final on Wednesday night and there against yeah. Wexford. You know, so we we need we need hurling counties to be strong. We need them to be strong because we need competition and we need and we're all from everywhere and we all I want player to win no matter who we're playing. But you're the same, you Offaly and Tipperary. But at the end of the day, the game is bigger than any of us really. And we all love the game, love to see the game. And maybe we lag and fight about it. We love the game. You know, the game is just fantastic. And to see the colour that's being brought now, see the kids going to the games, it's fantastic. And it's great to see the players as well, giving their time to the youngsters mm. after the matches. You know what I mean? And, you know, signing autographs and lads excited and things like that. I took my own grandson out to Limerick, you know, to the limerick Clare match. Jeez, he was in a highlight, you know, he went out into the field and met the players. Whether they were Limerick or Clare, it didn't make any difference, you know, but especially Clare, you know, he's wearing these Clare colours, you know, but 
at the end of the day, that's what's going to make young lads play hurling. We need him playing hurling. We need him given the right instructions as well. We need to give him be, to be uh, role models for these young lads, you know, because that's what it's all about, you know. And a lot of young people, a lot of parents taking under 12s, under 10s around the, the clubs in the country and things like that. It's fantastic to see it. I think it's fantastic to see it, you know. Is there anything we haven't covered on that Clare Waterford game? Like, again, just for anyone who was hiding under a rock for a summer, 222 to 16 points. It was a beat down. Kilm Lines got sent off after a half an hour. Waterford had their chances so many wise. Tony or Jamie Barron, I should say, had a goal chance early on. We're a lot of the we're a lot of wides from poor positions as well, though, Shane. Like lower oh, percentage yeah. out the field shots. Like I, I that's why I don't kind of always, you know, a team could have 20 wides, but you know, were 10 of them good scoring chances or were they wild shots? Do you know what I mean? There was a, I think there was a bit of both. Like they had some great score. And wasn't it the same against Limerick when the game was there to be won? Limerick were down to 14 men and they're missing wides from crazy angles. But he, like even so, are they able to manage a game in game correctly? In that Limerick had that extra, or sorry, we're down a man and they're still running the ball out like we were talking about earlier and emptying their own 45. And then the ball is turned over and you know, you're, you're completely exposed at the back. The other thing too is, Teams are sitting well off Waterford because they realise their whole team is going yeah. to drift up the field. And, you know, as a team defending, you want there to be nothing but traffic in your half of the field. And when you counter for there to be nothing but space. And Waterford seems to be playing right into that. So when Waterford do uh, run the ball out and the opposition drifts back, Waterford don't seem to have the composure to take that extra pass or two to try and take a good scoring attempt rather than shooting with a player running at full speed around the middle of the field. That's my take on it. I thought that that's what happened against Limerick. I thought too often it happened the other day as well. But they missed great chances too, like Barron's scoring chance. It was so. And look, Desi Hutchinson, like he's done serious damage on Rory Hayes in the last couple of years. I mean, Rory Hayes is a good defender, but sometimes he, he has trouble. And you don't put him in there on him. I mean, I don't get it. Yeah, no, it's very no. There was a lot of things. Now, listen, right? We've probably talked about the management and various things. I, I have to say, I find it mystifying as well that. Uh, Owen Kelly, one of the you know greatest hurlers of all time, one of the greatest inside forwards of all time, is involved in a management team that doesn't play an inside line a lot of the time. I just that's just my I just find that very strange. But we've probably talked about the management a good bit. But there's probably what's his role though? What's Peter Queeley's role? What's Donnick O'Callaghan about? Do you know? Well, Donnick O'Callaghan was up in Dublin by all accounts doing TV coverage for the rugby at the same time as the game was going on, which would. You know, you'd have to seriously question his role then as well. I mean, listen, that that was probably something maybe that was agreed beforehand or yeah, not. I don't, I, I don't, I, and it probably was, but I still don't think it's necessarily right because you know the old saying of if you enlist your soldier, like regardless of how what else is going on, if you're involved in a setup, even if they're playing against your own county, you just get on with it or whatever. But like, are we absolving the players of total blame here? Mostly the same players who were involved in Parik Fanning's uh, year in 2019 that didn't end well. That some of them don't with. look fit enough. Let's call a spade a spade. We're not going to call lads out in particular, but some of them don't look fit enough. No, you're probably right, yeah. But it's, you know, it's the same. It's the same players that you know underperformed in the latter stages of the Munster Championship last year. And you can say that was to do with the training or not. Um, but it's the same players under underperformed again this year as well. So I think probably they probably need to take a, a long hard look at themselves. And I don't like. I'm not having a go at them or anything like that. It's just that's the facts of the matter. That potentially that's a common denominator, and maybe it's too easy to to talk about what's going on in the sideline or what way they're playing when it's generally been the same players that have been misperform or underperforming over the last couple of years. Uh, Grode 9 says, Desi Hutchinson, unreal player and does serious damage, but fit the most part this year while he's inside. Uh, but for the most part this year, while he's been inside, the service has been shocking. If they, don't, if they don't play him, if they don't play, if they don't play the ball to him, it doesn't matter how good he is. He got a couple of balls the other day and was dangerous, started the second half. But if you don't feed him, he won't score. But also, the way he strikes the ball, to me, he seems like someone who's very accurate normally inside the 45. But beyond, I don't really think that that's his striking range, especially because you have to yeah. move around at speed. And can I just I read out this comment from TV Street? O'Callaghan is a performance coach, so hardly needed in real time, to be fair. But I'd love to know what that amounts to. What does that mean? And then, look, one other thing worth bringing up here is, I mean, can someone explain to me what this is about? Is it, is it a breathing exercise or something like that? But like... It's a strange one, Shane. Yeah, apparently it is some sort of breathing exercise. I just, again, but I, you don't need to do it in a circle like that. If everyone's doing a breathing thing, I like surely it can be less conspicuous. 
Yeah, I'd be listen. I'd be of that. What the, is it? Kiss is what they say. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it, mm. you know. Keep it, keep it simple. There's no need to complicate anything. Like it's clear that things are already complicated. I don't. Yeah, think everything you is compl- complicated. You don't, you don't need there... to be complicated the more. Is there anything uh, like simple about what they do? Does everything have to be complicated? It feels like everything is just like difficult for them. Like everything has to be, I don't know, just OTT. So yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I'd, I'd agree with you. I think there's just there's there's too much going on. Uh, to be honest, with you. there's just way too much going on. There's too much going on in the sideline. There's too much going on on the pitch. There's too much thought gone into the whole thing. Again, like that that could be a reason why there were twenty minutes in the dressing room at half time as well. Too much talk. Too much thought. Like I don't know if you're a manager at that stage, you'd be given a couple of simple instructions. Not what they generally say. Three messages, and you let the players go out and do what they have to do out on the pitch. And we like mentioned it earlier, like in the past, we've kind of tried to give Davy plenty of credit, but like you have to call a spade a spade too. And like we've definitely given him a platform to give his opinion a few times and asked him on a few other times. I mean, for me, like we have to call it out and say that it's just, I mean, like three wins in the last 16, one against Leash, one against Carlo, one against Kilkenny back in 2019, you know, in his championship games going back to the start of 2019. It's just not good enough. And too often it feels like the same thing or a different version of the same thing. Um, yeah, it's just frustrating to watch at this stage. Like, uh, Caleb Lines, red card or not for you? As in two uh, I, I thought the first yellow was a bit mad. I thought David Fitzgerald went down soft enough. He was technically the third man in. He barely touched him. Like, genuinely, like, he, ba- he barely touched him. I, I really see a video. wasn't shown. Um, well, yeah, certainly during yeah, the coverage, maybe it was a afterwards. T- a, little, a tiny little shoulder into the chest. Now, I mean to say that was bump, it was more bumping off a lad, in my opinion. Should he have gone in? Like, I don't, see this whole third man in thing. It's not as if he was going in to incite a riot or anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, what was he going into to do? What was he trying uh, to achieve? I don't know. No, I just think one of his teammates was after being fouled. You go in and hit a lad like a tight, a small bit of a dunt. Like, I don't look, think I'm all for it, but like, yeah, <laughs> there is the odd one where the third man in leads to a melee. You know, we um, saw it against Carlton to Kenny a while back. You know, we've seen it in a few games. So potentially, know. like any little hoo ha that started after was probably as a result of Caleb Lines. But I would say this: it was as a result of David Fitzgerald hitting the ground when he's six foot four and about sixteen stone. It takes a fair dunt to put him to the ground, and that was not a fair dunt. And just on the Rory Hayes thing as well. Again, we're not in the business of calling out players. I just hate seeing that type of thing I hate seeing like you're essentially trying to get somebody punished for doing nothing and I just hate to see it and I think we're going to have to come up with some sort of a I think like I'd have no issue with yellow card I'd have no issue with a black card for someone if they, if the referee thinks they're simulating if, I don't like the black card generally but that's the sort of thing that it needs to be cutting out cynical play is that not cynical play as well almost as well I think it's as cynical as they come Mm. Uh, comment in here TV Street third man in is a fella doing a lad that's unaware that yellow was ridiculous Paul Newtape Watford are in a bad place now with Davies manager the players deserve better than this this is a this is Watford's golden generation they've maybe two years left in them before most retire like they're to be fair like the underage success that they had the time is supposed to be now with this Watford team the same way that, that I think the time is now for this Clare team because John Conlon's what 34 he either yeah. is or is about to be 34 Tony Kelly's probably 29. He won hurler the year in 2013, age 19. So he's he's 29 now, probably not too far off 30 as well. They really have to strike because once the two of them are gotten, we saw the difference without Conlon last year in the All Ireland semi final. Now that shouldn't have happened, but you know, the time is certainly now for them. Like Shane O'Donnell must be 28 now as well at this stage. Yeah, 29, 20, yeah, 28, 29. He was he looked he definitely is back to his best as well. I take Adrian's point here. What happened after Lions came in? Uh Verdi, mass brawl, that's the rule. Yeah, no, I think David Fitzgerald hitting the ground had a big part to do in that as well. But yeah, I I've no issue really with the second yellow. He kind of took out a man kind of going past him and his hurl got caught up in him. Um I just I just don't like it and I don't like lads feigning injury or whatever. It was a hat with like two you know, I definitely thought the first yellow was soft, I'll put it to you that way. Yeah, yeah, I, I look, I agree with you broadly. Um, J 